Uh, Iron Riddle says he's sent in a short thought story. Always nice to see. Where are you at? I know you're in here somewhere. There it is. It's <laughs> Oppression my ass is what he says okay. here. 1994, I spent a few days in Izmir, Turkey. I had heard of and wanted to see the compound with my own eyes. Not sure what the Turks called it, but that's what us jarheads called it. For those who don't know, the compound is where the wives and daughters of Turkish men go uh. Ooh, excuse me, when those men can't pay their debts. Ooh. The men go to debtor's prison and stay there until the debt is paid in full. The women go to the state-run compound and pay off the men's debts by prostitution. Oh, wow. When and if bad. the debts are paid off and the men are released, and usually they will not retrieve their wives and daughters because they have been defiled. No other men want them either, so most of these women spend the rest of their lives in the compound. Another note, Turkey follows Islamic law. Not trying to be a killjoy here, but I'm tired of women in the West lamenting about how oppressed they are and continue to demand equality. Fucking wah, go to an Islamic state. But enough of that story. It was a Friday evening, and I wanted to go to the bar bar. No, just bar crawl, but I had the bar bar part. But all the other NCOs had wives or dates, so I went by myself. Bar crawl is where you go out the front gate of the base and walk to the back gate, hitting every bar along the way, and have a beer. I am more than familiar with bar crawl. Oh, I'm sure you are. This was back when you could get a bottle for one or two bucks. Watching other people was my entertainment, and it was an inexpensive way to spend the night. I went to this one bar and ordered my beer. I think it was beer number four for the night. It was 25, and the bar wench was about 35 and too fat for my taste. Mm. And looked way too worn out with meth and dicks for anyone in her big mind, <laughs> in their big <laughs> mind. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, okay. Obviously, there were some dick thinkers in the room. Three other jarheads were giving her time and attention that she hadn't earned, other than being born with two tits and a bonus hole. <laughs> I love how we're using leftoid propaganda to make comedy. It's great. It seemed that these jarheads thought each one of them would be able to take her home that night when they all should have been running away. She was loving the attention and acted like some sort of goddess, all arrogant and stuck up. The perfect 49er before I knew what a 49er was. But actually, she was more of a 39er. All these guys were younger than me and were bragging about how about where they'd been and deployments they'd been on. It was like they thought whoever had been there done that the most was going to get the unlucky... Uh, was go- oh, oh, I'm sorry, but I read this again. Got a weird phrasing. It was like they thought whoever had been there, done that the most, was going to get unlucky with her that night. Mm. Even though her meat sandwich was probably dripping with the duh. (laughs) Her steak drapes. (laughs) Steak drapes. God, that's so, that's such a visceral image. Bring those steak drapes over here. Baby, I want to put some A1 sauce on (laughs) them. God. Oh, heaven save us. <laughs> <laughs> Although I wasn't red pill aware back then, it was easy to see the human mating rituals being performed. I was shaking my head with disgust at the lack of self-respect these young jarheads had simping for bar wench. Mm. I think that's something we can all relate to. <laughs> you know, because you know, a ten at two is a a two at ten is a ten at two, right? And you see yes. these dudes who are just, they want to stick their dick in something. Just starting to simp for women who, well, they they just look like oxygen thieves. Well, they're dick thinking is what they're doing. Just saying. The zombie army. Of and all the chicks we talked dicks. about tonight, there are trees, there are forests out there that work night and day. To provide oxygen to these fucking cunts, <laughs> and they owe each and every one of those fucking trees an apology. Yes, they do. <laughs> I think that's the thug life. <laughs> okay, then. I think you need a thug life for that one. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> no, it's definitely a thug life, bro. Ah, <laughs> uh, simping for bar wench. Oh my god, that sounds like a comedy skit. Simping for bar wench. I was nearly done with my beer, and Barwench chimes in a very arrogant way. You think you guys have been to a lot of places, but you haven't been anywhere until you've been to the compound. I don't know why she sounds like Janice in my head, but there you go. All three jarheads in some form said, why? What's that? Where's that? Suddenly, it was like I was the antagonist in a Clint Eastwood movie. Whistling spaghetti western music is playing in the background. I said, I've been to the compound. 
Cue the Mexican solo trumpet playing. <whistles> Looking straight ahead and watching this devil's foursome orgy of foreplay in the bar mirror. Three jarheads look at me like I was a god and you could hear a pin drop. Bar went then starts yelling at me like it's my fault the place even exists. Hmm. Wow. If I lived there, there's no fucking way I would ever whore myself out to pay off my husband's debts. He could pay off his own shit. It's all the patriarchy's fault. Men suck and I hate them all. Which is why you can't wait to suck them off, right? <laughs> it's unbelievable that women there tolerate that kind of treatment. It's an Islamic country, honey. Yeah. They don't get much choice. They need to rise up and defeat them. Blah, 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 blah. On and on as she continued her soapbox of feminist green vomit spewing everywhere flowing over the bar and onto the floor for several minutes. I stood up as she began to wind down from her tantrum. I needed to leave before I did something stupid. Good thing I wasn't drinking whiskey. I finished my beer and began to walk out while she was still bitching. The three jarheads looked confused, still not having a clue why she went from friendly fuckable bar wench to raging man-hating cock guillotine. <laughs> oh, my God. Damn. That's bad mental image right there. The man hating cock guillotine. That's uh, yeah. That's 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 a good one right there. Uh. <laughs> My blood was boiling as I made eye contact with the three men and said, "Marines, I'm Sergeant Riddle. Don't you dare tip her." I looked right at her, and her eyes got wide, and her mouth fell open. She must have seen the fire in my eyes as I inhaled to speak. Knife hand. If you lived there, you wouldn't be educated enough to even know anything that you just said. If you lived there, you wouldn't be working in a bar. You would be in your home raising your children and taking care of your man instead of these men. If you lived there, you wouldn't think that you were oppressed. If you lived there, these three men right here would drag your ass out to the parking lot and stone you to death for speaking against the government, against Islam, and against men. But you don't live there. You live here. And you're protected by the blood, sweat, and tears of men and by men. You are blessed and don't even know it. Fuck! Off and I walked out. Amen. <laughs> now that deserves a thug life right I was there. Just gonna say that. <laughs> nice. I started having two beers at a time after that and effectively fell down three times after I got through the back gate on the way back to the barracks. Bar crawl mission accomplished. <laughs> that happens. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat gazer box.